G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. And in today's video we are going to be breaking down the Bluey episode from season 1, Yoga Ball. Now I feel like no matter what, the very first thing we have to talk about with this episode is of course the Indiana Jones references because there are quite a few actually in this episode as well as all throughout Bluey in general. Now the first one of course is the game Raiders. Oh you mean Raiders. Yeah! Yeah, right. Where they are using the green ball to replace the boulder from the Indiana Jones movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, where of course Indiana Jones is like running away from a boulder that's chasing after him. <laughs> We've got that noise, da -na -na -na, which is from Indiana Jones as well. Da -na -na -na. So straight away, that's what that game is. It's a replica of that. We have also seen like the Indiana Jones reference before in the episode Perfect with the no ticket game that Bandit plays. The idea then is of course, like Bandit might've been inspired by Indiana Jones when he was a kid. And it's why he ended up becoming an archeologist himself. And obviously he watches these movies a lot or Bandit himself is the Indiana bones of the Blueverse. That's a theory though for another day. Now, of course, something to note is like as the ball is rolling down that corridor, we see multiple doors. And again, this sort of goes into the theory of the girl's version of the house or what they see is just so much bigger and more magical because they're kids. So that's why we see like infinite amount of doorways as the ball is rolling down. But the room that they jump into though, we've never seen before. And I don't think we've ever seen again because it just has like a half of a little red couch there on the side. So this is a room that's never been explored in Bluey except for this one episode. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about that maybe you didn't notice was the music in this episode. So aside from of course the da 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 for the Raiders, the music that Bandit is whistling like while they're playing this game of do 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 <laughs> okay. that we already had heard actually in the episode hotels oh bingo we have a guest so maybe this whistling sound just got stuck in Dave McCormick's head, who's the voice of Bandit, and he was just using it for both episodes, but it is cool to notice that it was in two episodes. Now, speaking of really fun music, of course, we had like the elevator music while they were playing the elevator game, which leads us into our next little detail, which is an Australian reference. So Bandit, of course, picks up a thong, as we call it in Australia, overseas, you guys say flip-flops. And on the thong, though, is the little Australian flag as well. So nice, cute Aussie reference. But also, why, where did these songs come from? Like they don't wear shoes. They never wear shoes around the house. So the fact that he has two shoes on his feet already is suspicious. I've made a theory video about what's going on with clothes in the Bluey verse as well. I'll leave a link for it up here and in the description box down below. Some other Australian references though you might or might not have noticed was the word nappies. So in Australia, we say nappies. Overseas, you guys say diapers. And we did eventually see Bluey in nappies as well, of course, in the episode Baby Race. And the only other little Aussieism was, of course, Chili's hockey stick with the green and gold, which is the national sports colours of Australia. Some other little hidden Easter eggs were the tennis balls, of course. We saw one tennis ball in the picture frame on the way down the stairs. And we also see a sticker of a tennis ball in the girl's room as well on their little side bench. We have a backpacking photo of Chili and Bandit that we see in the hallway, which could be from when they went to Italy and when Bandit proposed to her, perhaps. Bandit asked Chili to marry him on a romance trip to... Um, Italy. We also have a nice little nod to a PTA meeting and it being not the funnest thing with a little sad face on it in the toilet. And then we also have this other really interesting cut scene and it is of a little tea cup and saucer with a little ladybug coming down onto it. And on the cup, it has a little blue bird on it. Now, of course, when we see this straight away, the ladybug signifies Bingo. Bingo is constantly associated with bugs throughout every Bluey episode. She's always with ladybug, walking leaves, just bugs in general. She has a lot of them at her daycare as well. So we also always can see that, you know, there's something to going on with Bingo if we see a bug involved. And yeah, this whole episode is to do with Bingo finding her big girl bark. So something to note though, is that blue bird that's on the actual teacup has a very interesting meaning. So the blue bird meaning is that it is a friendly bird who doesn't display fear, has a cheerful song, even when the climate is inhospitable. Sound like anyone you know? Yeah. That's, that's bingo throughout this whole episode. She's constantly putting on a brave face, even though she's not really feeling okay in the inhospitable environment that she's in constantly with her dad playing too rough with her. She doesn't display any fear when really she should, and she should be using her big girl bar. So I feel like that cut scene was just a little nod towards bingo. Cheeky dogs, if you've been enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below and leave a comment. It really means a lot to me into helping build my channel and the YouTube gods also seem to like channels that have lots of likes in them as well.
We do have some really fun like dog jokes as well in this where Bandit yells at the girls, stay, stay, when they first steal the yoga ball from him. And then of course the big girl bark and Ruffs as well. There is also some animation changes or sort of differences that have happened over the seasons that you can really tell sort of watching back in season one now. So the first one is the family picture in the bedroom. You can see Chili's original design where her brown fur patch goes all the way over her eye rather than just sort of cutting out around her eye. And then of course, when they get down on all fours, the shape of their heads have changed. So in season one, they had like this more rounded shape or it kind of like disappeared into their body. But by the time we get to season three, for example, with the episode Sheepdog, the animation has changed and now they have square faces whenever they're on all fours. Our next little Easter egg is Mixed Up Murphy. So we've actually seen Mixed Up Murphy before this episode in the episode Bob Bilby. The girls are watching the big screen TVs at the supermarket and they're telling Bob that this is Mixed Up Murphy. He's a cat. He's really funny. And then of course we have Bluey reading the Mixed Up Murphy book. Although it has like a bird on it or a koala on it, I can't quite tell. But it is fun to notice that Mixed Up Murphy has made an appearance yet again. We also get a reference to a town called Mogadishu. Now this is where the packages are being sent when they're playing the delivery game and Mogadishu is actually the capital or the largest city in Somalia in Africa. So kind of a random choice, but perhaps the creator Joe Brum has been there or maybe his brother who is an archeologist who Bandit is based off has also been there for work and that's why they chose to use that town name. Aside from that, there is of course just some of the fun little details we learn in the background. Again, that the girls ages are four and six currently, that we have a really funny like new nickname called Lan and we get the most beautiful please face from Bluey as well, which has been turned into toys now. Overall though, for me, this episode was just a lot of fun. Like the music was really good and there's lots of little games in it as well that I think are great for parents. So it gives us idea of little games we can play with our kids too. And it was also nice to see like Bandit working from home, but being able to find a nice balance between both working and playing with his kids as well. And of course, the whole lesson of this episode is beautiful, that you do need to speak up when you are afraid or when you're feeling uncomfortable in a situation. It is really important that you use your big girl bark, that you say that you are uncomfortable. And again, also, I think it's how you respond to someone saying that to you is just as important. So we see a beautiful example from Bandit who apologizes and then says, yeah, okay, let's practice how we should be talking or how we should be behaving in this situation so that they can go forth and they're both okay with it rather than just being like, oh, I'm sorry, okay, won't do it again. No, they actually then practice it. So I think this is just a perfect example of how to react in this kind of situation from both point of views, being able to express when you're uncomfortable and how to accept and apologize and practice moving forward with someone who's just said that to you. And I think even as adults that that's something that we can learn from. So for me, this is definitely a four and a half out of five long dogs. What would you cheeky dogs give this episode? Let me know in that comment section down below. And also what was your favorite game that they played in this too? And did you find my Easter eggs in the background of this video? I have two long dogs and a Chattermax hiding in my background at all times. If you find them again, let me know in that comment section down below. But until the next video cheeky dogs, I have left you a few other ideas ideas from other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I will see you all in another video. Mwah! Bye!